Hey, this is Dana. This is four minutes of me cutting, demolding, and casting in plaster this portrait of Kevin. So I cut it first with the mold cutting knife. Um, it cuts a groove in, and you can see that the flange has a little groove in it, a key. Uh, and that helps the two parts of the rubber mold connect to each other in the correct place when you put them back together again. The thing is, is that the mold knife doesn't usually cut all the way through. You kind of have to pay attention to where the groove is in the flange. So I make a mark with a Sharpie marker. After I've cut it, I finish the cut with an X-Acto knife down to the surface. This is a water-based clay sculpt, and the mold rubber peels off really nice and clean. But I do have to wash it a little bit, so I take it to the sink and I wash it and scrub it. Once I've got it clean and back in the mother mold, then I mix up a batch of Puritan pottery plaster. I like this plaster because it's a medium density, medium speed plaster. It's kind of a good general all around plaster. And I put in a splash coat um, and that basically is a coat with the mold open so that I can have as few air bubbles as possible in the surface of the mold. And um, what I use is a brush, and that helps me get the plaster onto the surface of the rubber. Um, and uh, as the plaster is setting, I continue brushing it. And I brush plaster on both parts of the mold. Both halves at the same time, if possible. If it's a really huge mold, you can do them separately. But I tend to try to do, the, do it all at the same time. Once that plaster starts to thicken and I feel like I'm not seeing any rubber inside the mold, like it's got a good coat on it, then I clean up the flange with my plaster knife and I'm going to put a little hemp fiber in there to give it a little bit of reinforcement. The thing is, is you want these plaster casts to be hollow and relatively thin. You don't want it to be super thin, but you want it to be around a quarter to three-eighths of an inch, ideally. Half an inch, three-quarter in parts is fine, but you don't need a big life-size bust like this to be solid cast. It's just not necessary. And the plaster is stronger and lighter and easier to deal with if it's hollow. So once those two parts have gelled, I put the two parts of the mold together and I strap it um, to hold it all in place. I take care to make sure that the seam is lined up properly. And then I take another batch of plaster and I start to uh, fill in the seam. So I pour some plaster in and I roll it around um, and uh, get make sure that it's covering the, the seam really nicely. As that batch starts to set, then I reinforce the base because the base is where it's going to sit on a table or whatever and you don't want it to chip. So you want that part to be a little thicker, like around three quarters of an inch. So as that plaster is gelling up, I just put it in with my hand and I reach down inside the mold and get a good layer in there. After about 20-30 minutes that is set up and I can demold my plaster cast. So I take all my rubber bands off or bolts or straps or whatever I've held my mold together with. And then I carefully separate the mother mold sections. When I have a mold like this, I usually have one piece that's going to peel off easily. In this case, it's the back. And then that front piece, I'm careful to get it out around the ears and then peel all the edges loose and then demold it. And there's Kevin.